part of the syllabus and this is basically based on the last lecture that I gave which is on blend spaces and what it means to uh, say uh, when you talk about geodesics and related things on a blend space. Okay? So this is not going to be uh, what we will be concerned with. So but if you like the kind of things we discussed last time then uh, this is a problem set which addresses some of the questions that were asked, namely that the other question regarding why is the length restricted to a sub interval continuous as a function of Tn, things like that. So it's broken down to various things and in particular it leads you to a proof that a Riemannian manifold is a length space. Okay. Meaning you have a mg and that gives you a distance by taking infimum of, <coughs> of C1 curves, but then you can also look at its intrinsic distance, which is take any curve which is rectifiable, calculate the distance and then take superior and then so anyway and there is one example also I think I watched up the last thing because I was thinking of maps sort of maps to the interval but I was trying to talk about maps from the interval but anyway so there are enough examples now I think so we can <coughs> just, just pass it off so <coughs> anyway that's uh, it's an optional homework so I mean if you uh, are struggling with the first two homeworks, <coughs> perhaps you could skip this and try to sort those out first. Okay. <coughs> Yes, I still owe you the proof that the topology used by D and the underlying topology is the same. We'll maybe prove it in one of the lectures before the next term. <coughs> so, yeah, so let me give you the definition. So oftentimes if I say a C1 curve or a C infinity curve, I mean a piecewise C infinity curve or a piecewise C1 curve. So all the things we talk about make sense. Yeah, a piecewise C1 curve. <coughs> um, it's a C1. So uh, yeah, so this is a basic Choose a path, a piecewise C1 path connecting the two points. 
and then you calculate the distance of that path by integrating the speed. <coughs> D is basically the infinite over all possible space in one curve. So this is a metric, and so the theorem basically so so we know that this <coughs> this is now a metric space, so it has an underlying topological space, and that underlying topological space is the old topological space in it. So that's the only thing we have to prove here. But I'm, I'm going to assume. <coughs> so, yeah. So, C1 curve is on. Uh, I'm just going to borrow the definition from the last lecture. So, we said something is called a geodesic in a metric space, means it's not globally left minimizing, but it's locally left minimizing. So a length minimum curve we call is basically a map from some interval to a space so that it has constant speed. Constant speed means d of sigma t or d of sigma t prime is c times t minus c prime or some non and some non-zero with non-negative constant speed. Right? So this was what constant speed meant. Yes? <coughs> and Length minimizing means that d of sigma t1 to this constant speed. And so this is uh, yeah. So for t belongs to i, where the epsilon belongs to zero, right? Like that. Ah, so uh, okay. So this is equal to let now. This was our our definition. So uh, of course we'll, we'll import all of this in this sense. The only new thing that you see here is this L, but remember the L was defined. Families of curves or rectal family curves, or how is the length of a curve defined? It was just to break up into finer and finer intervals, and then you don't measure the length of the curve because you cannot measure it here, but you simply measure the distance between these two points, distance between these two, and add them up, and then take the supremum over all subdivisions, that is the width of the subdivision getting close to zero. That was the length of a curve, and saying it's length minimizing. Means this, saying it's locally length minimizing means around T, there is some neighborhood for which this is length minimizing on that neighborhood. And constant speed is this. We argued that sigma is defined on a connected interval. Then local constant speed is the same as uniform constant speed, but C is the same. This is what we are looking for. It's called a Jurassic. So this is locally length minimizing, it's constant speed. Jurassic K. Okay. <coughs> If let's say if I put here if A sigma has uh, let me put it this way, constant speed. This is the first time. Right? <coughs> this simply means that that problem, right? The distance of sigma T1, sigma T2. This makes sense because we are using the D obtained from the metric G. This is the first thing. The next thing again, this is C1. That's the only new thing I'm adding. And this is locally. So we will see that it will turn out to be the same as the integrate. This is the L. So this is the L that you 
get from any distance. <coughs> Given a distance function, you take a curve and then chop the curve into smaller bits, and you calculate the distance between two successive image points. And you take the sum, that's a finite sum, take supreme over all sub all subdivisions where the width goes to zero. The L is within V, there's no integral sigma prime and all that. But <coughs> you see that that's equivalent. Or which we see so this is this or or P1 and P2 in P0 minus epsilon P0. And we'll, we'll give a much more uh, concrete thing to work with as an alternate definition, but the concrete definition is going to be very obscure. That's the reason why I'm starting with this definition. Because the concrete definition is going to be some differential equation, which is the definition. So you, I mean, once if you see, if you use that, way, you may not make any sense of why the equation is very important. <coughs> okay. So yeah, so if you, if you look through this, this problem sheet. I mean, again, this is, I think, mostly not relevant for the course, but there is problem 4, which says if you have a Riemannian manifold, D and L are D of D. So D is the D that you get from G, and the L is the L that you get from the D that you get from G. Right? So then it says that if you have a piecewise C1 curve, which is, as in our case, then a piecewise C1 curve is actually rectified. And the idea being if you have a piecewise C1 curve, let's say it's something like right? So why is it rectifiable? Well, you have to subdivide this into smaller and smaller things. So if you can ensure that there is some subdivision, right? Uh, so yeah, if you can ensure that no matter how you subdivide, the successive lengths add up to something less than or equal to a fixed constant, then you know that it's rectifiable because it's bounded by some C. The claim is if sigma is p by c1, then you can show that if you take any partition, this is a equal to p0 less than p1 less than pk minus 1 less than pk equal to b, and your sigma is defined from a b, this is c1 or p by c1 from m, <coughs> then you can check that if I, and you can assume that this partition is such that one of the TIs, these breakpoints are are part of the TIs by subdividing it minus. So once you do that, then the claim is that if you calculate this object, what is this? This is precisely what we are trying to do. This is basically G of sigma of P i minus 1, C of TI, right? This i is equal to 1 through K. Okay. This is Precisely, so in this picture, if you subdivide it, let's say here, 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 let's say like this, this is A, this is sigma of A, sigma of B, then you are calculating the distance between these two points, but how do you calculate this distance? This is itself a minimum over all curves. All piecewise C1 curves join this point to this point. But sigma is, is one such curve, right? The point is this quantity itself, which is less than or equal to sum of them. <coughs> I mean, this is basically the usual length. This is the length, which is called it Mg of sigma restricted to. Lg here will stand for the length that we are used to from calculus. This means given a C1 curve, you take its vector, you take its tangent vector, you evaluate the norm of that and you get from the domain endpoints. So this is clear because whenever we talk about this, remember this is basically infimum over all curves eta joining this to this so that this is Lg of eta, right? That this has the integral inside. So this was the definition. So this remember Lg is nothing but Integral of norm with a prime of s using the metric g g s and this is from sigma so s goes from wherever right so uh, this is from some pi minus one of pi such that eta of pi minus one is sigma pi and eta of pi is sigma pi. Right? So this is over all curves and in particular sigma is one such curve. So definitely the infimum is going to be less than this. Right? But what is this quantity? This is just the integral. 
restricted to the sub interval. So if you sum over this, this is what this is just. I basically did one of the homeworks for you. So it's this, but what is this sum? This is basically the length, right? This is the whole integral. It is breaking it up, but it's integral. So no matter how you break up, the limit and the limit should they all agree and they then equal and it is the actual integral of this from A to B. So this basically tells you no matter which partition you choose, the, the sum that you get using that partition is less than this length. This is something cannot be to see. So now if you take, uh, now what you have to do, you take supreme over all such partitions of sigma. That's going to give you the length of sigma. But then your obviously will be bounded by this because this is a constant independent of the function. That's the yeah, that's the point. So uh, yeah, what then should I really say this? Ah yeah, so I said this to make the point that you have a piecewise C1 curve and a piecewise C1 curve is rectifiable. Why? Because now if you take supreme one for all partitions, should not be a sigma. This is obviously less than A G sigma because the right hand side is independent of E. This is by definition. So piecewise C1 curve is rectifiable, in particular the length is bounded by this. So, <coughs> anyway, so we can, we can talk about constant speed locally length minimizing in the usual sense that we talked about last time. So you just have to take care of these two criteria, but this is hard to work with because there's no way to check these kind of things unless you have one single equation governing something or a set of equations. This is, it's not a very tractable thing to work with. Although geometrically this is the right thing to do. Okay, so uh, there's a picture, so I guess let me put it this way. Uh, Things. 
So this order space is more than e one. This order space is more than e two. So the claim is that if you restrict yourself to this interval, choose any two points, look at the corresponding image as e m, then the distance between these two points measured using the Riemannian metric g to all curves and so on is actually minimized and realized by sigma restricted to this interval. So you cannot have another curve which actually has length shorter than sigma restricted to p1 to p2. This is true for all p1 to p2. Okay. So it's not that like there's some specific, it could be that there's another curve here which realizes the same distance, but that curve is not going to work for t1 and t2 even smaller because these points are not going to lie on sigma t1, sigma t2. So it's, I mean, that, that's a picture that you should have in mind. Okay. But anyway, the picture is not going to help us much in the actual computation. <laughs> so let's get back to what we said. Right? So remember this thing. Uh, Yeah, so you see the first thing says the G length Yeah, so I think part of the problem 4 is that if you have a piecewise smooth curve then the length computed using these sums and supremes is equal to the length computed by the, the norm of sigma prime and that is one of the things which we do Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to use that fact which is part of the I have sigma is piecewise t1. All of this is almost going to be redundant soon enough because we work with the other generation. But then this length, so this is let's say gamma, means gamma restricted to any. So this is by definition gamma restricted to the whole interval. But you could talk about lengths of gamma restricted to any subject. Okay, so my gamma is, oh, there's no gamma. Sorry. Sigma, sigma is TKD if my i is the closed interval. Right? So this is this, but this will turn out to be this other length. Right? Remember, this is nothing but A to B. This is the length that we are used to. So if you want to piecewise, I mean, this is true for RM because we can simply break it up into smaller chunks and the distance is realized by straight line segments. Uh, so, uh, okay. yes, okay. So I want to make use of this here. So if I make use of this fact, the length here can be replaced by the length of this object, right? So let's look at condition 2. So B, what does B tells me? B tells me that distance of sigma T1 Sigma T2. So let's say T1 is 0. Okay? So let's say T1 is equal to 0. Just to translate it, you know how to do it. Just shift i so that T0 is somewhere close to 0 and T1 is the point. So this and T2 is T. And they are small enough so that this works. Okay? So this is going to be on the one hand, this is constant times. 0 minus t, t times mod t. So let's assume that t is positive. So we're choosing 0 and then a small positive number bigger than that, obviously. So you see, this is true for all t1 and t2, both of these things. I just choose t1 and t2 to be bigger than t1 or the other one. If you choose this, this is gone, right? It's simply ct. Right? So, so this is what you get from a. So a plus b. And we know that this is also equal to the length, right? So what is the length? This is equal to, it, by this operation, this is going to be the length from 0 to let's say t of sigma prime of s t s, okay? Uh, so our, our, our curve is piecewise 
C1. It's not a general C0 curve. So if you choose your T to be small enough, sigma is actually going to be C1 on the integral. This is an honest integral there are no breaks involved. So what you get is this is equal to this is equal to this. So what is the upshot? So by so A tells you this, right? And B implies this is equal to B of sigma 0, sigma t. This is equal to C t, correct? So now if you differentiate both sides with respect to t, differentiate, this is what we hinted at last time. Apart from the points where this has a sort of bad 